question. Is there anything else that you're excited in the space of triple negative breast cancer? Yeah, you know, I think that there, there are two. There's a lot of things that are happening. I think that people, we don't have a ton of data, unfortunately, on HER2 low. About a third of patients uh, that with triple negative metastatic disease are HER2 low. Uh, that is one plus or two plus by IHC. Uh, and there's clear benefit, again, a very small subset of Destiny Breast 04, which is a trial in HER2 low, um, actually had a very nice response and a survival advantage, but only, but only was a 60 patient subset. So it's nothing like what we have with mm -hmm. sasituzumab, but we have that. And that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a very interesting data at ESMO about HER3. Um, uh, that's more in a, an ER positive uh, subset. They, didn't really, they did a few triple negative patients, mostly HER3. I think what we're waiting for datapotamab, which is um, uh, a TRO2, anti-TRO2 antibody with DXV as its payload, as opposed okay. to SN38. And so we're still waiting on that. I mean, we saw mm -hmm. some initial data. We kind of saw a little bit of data in the neoadjuvant mm -hmm. setting at ESMO showing, you know, reasonably decent PCR rates on the iSPY trial, which is a neoadjuvant trial. Uh, but we're waiting for that sort of thing. The one thing, again, I said was disappointing is that we don't have any really good oral agents you know, right. or the targeted agents, with the exception of PARP inhibitors. Right. And we really want that. I'd say the biggest and most exciting thing out of ESMO and triple negative, uh, even though it was kind of just replicating some stuff that we kind of already knew, was mm -hmm. the survival analysis on a trial called Keynote 522, which was a neoadjuvant trial of pembrolizumab and uh, typical chemos we give for, for early stage breast cancer. Right. It was a neoadjuvant study with a very high PCR rate of about 70%. That's they presented the survival data, and there was a clear survival advantage. Wow. There was a really substantial OS advantage. I think it was 5% yeah. or something like that. And that's enough, I mean, to show us. And so the whole idea is kind of like with HER2 in breast cancer. You know, in HER2, we we're so, have such effective early-stage therapy now. Mm -hmm. A lot of the patients we're seeing, especially in the United States, where we have access to all these therapies, are patients who have progressed. No, I'm, I'm sorry, patients who are de novo. Right. So we're not seeing a lot of relapsed patients in a lot of our practices now with herpes positive disease. And the hope for triple negative, this is the excitement theoretically, is that maybe with the success of you know neoadjuvant regimens like Keynote five two two, that maybe we won't have that much triple, much you know, relapsed triple negative disease anymore. That's our hope, and that's mm -hmm. the excitement. Um, but on the other hand, there's a lot you know, there's a ton of there's people. It's not for lack of trying. Right. We've really tried a lot of different right. approaches to triple negative, but I'm right. very excited about the new adjuvant. Data. Right. That's very exciting about the Keynote 522 study and, um, you know, that there is survival data, because even though when we see those, you know, other surrogate endpoints, having that survival data really makes an impact when you're having the discussion with patients. Yeah. In, in breast cancer, generally, if you, in triple negative, in the new adjuvant setting, if you can make it three, maybe four, maybe four years, but three years in general, I tell patients you're probably going to survive. And when we saw the data, from Keno 522, we saw the PFS, the event-free survival data, like a year or two ago, and you could see the curse plateaued. I mean, there was a right. separation early, as you'd expect, and then they plateaued. And we knew, right. if you saw that data, we knew if you relapse a triple negative breast cancer, you're going to die, basically. Right. That's unfortunate. But if you don't relapse, you probably won't, obviously. Right. And so, you know, when we saw that data kind of, those curves start to separate, I think a lot of us kind of predicted this was going to happen, but it's very nice to actually see it. And I've represented at the ESMO Presidential Symposium, which uh, um, Peter Schmidt did. And mm -hmm. so I think that that, to me, I mean, clearly, it didn't convince U.S. oncologists, but I think probably it's good that ESMO is more of an international venue. I think there's a lot of oncologists worldwide and a lot of, you know, payer systems worldwide that are a little hesitant, you know, to allow things in the neoadjuvant setting, such as pembrolizumab. Uh, and I think it's really going to convert them. Mm -hmm.